Hello and welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. JP Toys 97 here to continue our look at the captives building battle dinos, the slime eggs for the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. I originally wasn't going to split this video into two parts. It was going to be a one-parter, but I felt what the heck it's getting a little bit long so might as well split it and do the small eggs in one review and then the other review here i'll review the big eggs the supersized after opening up my eggs here in the box i have a whole set here in front of me very happy got the entire wave one dinosaurs here i was just missing the brachiosaurus the velociraptor and the triceratops so before we get to the mega eggs we'll take a look at these other three that were elusive from my other video as we've already taken a look at the other ones. And why not, let's look at the Brachiosaurus first. I really like this Brach, all the colors and the detail. It's wonderful. It's not quite in the Jurassic Park iconic pose standing on his hind legs, but it's pretty good. Nonetheless, there's the silver emblem for the Brachiosaurus on his underside. Happy with this one, very happy with this one. And here's the collector card for the Brachiosaurus. Walking trees. Awesome image. This almost makes me think of the McDonald's collector cup with the top down view, but now it's like a bottom up looking view. I don't know if that was an intentional nut or what, but it's great. Here's the back with the stats for the game that you can play. And we'll look at the Raptor, kind of fell over. His legs are a little bit warped, like some of the other dinosaurs here, but I'm sure with some warm and cold water, uh, could potentially straighten them out so like they're supposed to be. Otherwise, uh, some connect sand, and just push him down to the connect sand, and he will help him stand a little bit better. Would you just look at that? That is absolutely stunning. His head's looking back, so the pose is a little bit awkward. I would have liked the head to have just been looking forward, but really outstanding detail. He had the 30th anniversary silver emblem on his underside. The toe claws. Re all the detail on this is just absolutely fantastic. Just look at all the little ridges here on the back. Really great. The teeth are a lot more pronounced here on the Raptor than the Dilophosaurus. Another excellent figure here for the Wave 1 line, the Raptor. And here's the Velociraptor trading card. Velociraptors on the loose. A really nice image. Three raptors. The, probably the raptors from the original movie, the big one. <laughs> a nice picture. I love the artwork and the Jurassic Park sign. The back of the card with the statistics. Look at that intelligence rating just off the charts. <laughs> Another welcome card to the collection. And last but not least, the last dinosaur I pulled from my set that I was really looking forward to, the Triceratops. This almost makes me think of the Papo Triceratops in the same exact position. Colors might not be 100% accurate like the movie. Uh, when I think of the movie, I think of more shades of brown. And the colors on this trike are more, more of that gray, a light with a dark gray with black eyes. There's the silver emblem on his underbelly. Really like this one a lot. Uh, this might be one of my favorites. Uh, it's really hard to pick. I like all of these, honestly. And the trading card that comes with the Triceratops. Triceratops family time. Nice looking photo of the trikes eating. And look at the cute little baby just sitting there two adults. Jeep number 12. Uh, Dennis Nedry's Jeep? <laughs> I bet people didn't think I would pick up on that. Most people would probably overlook it, but I'm like, that's Dennis Nedry's Jeep, JP12. The back of the card. Extremely happy to have all the minis and the trading cards for them all. I'm gonna have to see if I can still flatten these out. I was doing my best to flatten them out here before the this next video I've got them to about there but I'm sure if I keep putting some heavy weight on these I can flatten them out to be all nice and nice and not all warped and all over the place like that so if you watch my other video I said these figures probably would go really well with the matchbox Jurassic Park vehicles from a couple years back and they do go well with them depending on which dinosaur it is that you have 
Like uh, the Brachiosaurus may be a little bit undersized, but some imagination and it's all fine. The T-Rex here is actually pretty okay, I would say, on size. Maybe he should be a little bit bigger, but not by much. As I said in an older video, I used to reenact the main road attack here like this with some random generic Hot Wheel Ford Explorers without this paint job and a unofficial T-Rex miniature, but now actually being able to have a matchbox Ford Explorer with the Jurassic Park paint job and an official really nice T-Rex mini like this. Uh, you could have some serious fun, let me say. Alright, so getting on to it now. We have here in front of us the 30th anniversary supersized captives eggs here. So I'm probably going to do an unboxing of one of these and what comes inside. And I might open the other two off camera and then show what I got. But let's take a closer look at this egg in comparison to one of the original smaller ones. Mm-hmm. The plastic wrapping on this egg is a little bit different than the smaller eggs. This one has more of a very retro, old-school vibe. One of my friends actually even said this almost looks like designs that you would see on, like, old 1990s Jurassic Park bed sheets or, like, pillowcases or something. And I really agree with that. It really is something to behold. I almost don't even want to tear these open. This plastic wrapper on this egg, keeping it sealed, looks so nice. A blue Raptor. Beware, supersized dino inside. You even still have elements of the Ford Explorer color scheme here in the background if you look closely, the red, green, and some yellow. I love this green T-Rex. 14 surprises included. Includes 14 surprises, reveal pop and lock battle, and more. You get one supersized dino, a sheet of eight stickers, a collector guide, one collector card, and three compounds. Then you just have the barcode, and that's pretty much about it. Really like this 3D looking eye. That makes that reminds me of the Burger King watches from 1997, The Lost World. I believe one of them was like a raptor eye, very similar to this. There's three stages. You have like a wink, a fully opened eye, and then fully closed. Really neat. Oh, and I also forgot to mention on the back of the egg, you have the Jurassic Park emblem. That wasn't on the smaller eggs anywhere, so really nice to see that. Same stamp here on this egg that was on the other eggs. UCS, LLC, and Amblin. Blah. Some coating. Don't think there's much else to go over here with the packaging or the wrapping here. Uh, I am pretty excited. To my knowledge, I think there are three supersized dinosaurs that you can obtain. You can obtain the Rex, the Spino, or a Trike. So I'm a little bit excited to see what am I going to pull here. And as always, I'm trying to pull upwards, and it just doesn't want to go up. There we go. I really like the wrapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here was hidden captives. Be cool, we got some cracking. Moment of truth. What did we get? How's this egg gonna crack open? Just like the other one you squeeze. Ooh. Put that over here. Ooh! This jump, it's holographic? Oh, that is awesome. Spinosaurus Mega Mayhem, and it's a holographic. It's got like this holographic shine to it. That is amazing. I'm happy. Honestly, I was going to be happy with any of the three dinosaurs here. I'd be happy with the Rex, Spino, or the Trike. Jurassic Park 3 looking colors, Spinosaurus. Uh, this seems to be a little bit bigger than a traditional size trading card, but this one feels more like a traditional size trading card than the smaller versions here, just to give you an idea. That's the size difference. These ones are pretty tiny. I don't think either of these will fit my binder, but I'm gonna have to find another way to store them or sleeve them for some protection. This is really, I wasn't expecting this to be holographic. Looks like a scene out of Jurassic Park 3 with the airplane. I'm really surprised here. That was a pleasant surprise, a holographic collector card. So yeah, well, I'm, I'm really happy. You get the collector guide here. I think this collector guide, uh, yeah, so this collector guide is a bit different. It has the rules of the game here on the back, and the supersized downers you can get are Triceratops, Spinosaurus, and the Rex. 
Ooh, this slime looks a lot different than the other slime. Prehistoric sand. And well, that looks really cool too. An amber egg, amber gel. All right, before we get to the components here, we'll keep the components right over there. Let's take a quick look here at the sticker sheet. So the sticker sheet is a little bit crumpled and a few of the stickers are kind of popping up off the sticker sheet. So I might have to stick them somewhere sooner rather than later before they might dry out. Take a look at this. You get the iconic Brachiosaurus, the Jurassic Park hard hat, a black and white amber egg like from Hammond's Cane. One of a very favorite scene from the original movie with the Brachiosaurus. T-Rex skull. An old looking vintage movie poster with this cartoon elements to it with scenes from the movie. Wonderful. And this might be my favorite sticker on the sheet here, the Jurassic Park M1 with the Ford Explorer colors. I can already think of multiple places where slapping these stickers on would be cool. A skateboard, a laptop, a computer, <laughs> anywhere you can think of. Engine slime, prehistoric sand. Amber gel. Amber gel is really awesome because of the mosquito there, but when you turn it around and you can see through it and see the mosquito, it's almost like a piece of amber from the movie that the scientist would be extracting something from. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't know where to begin here. Um, how about we open the prehistoric sand first? So I believe this prehistoric sand is just some kinetic sand. Okay, this is kind of funny now that I think about it. So just like Dr. Grant and some paleontologists in the movie, we have to dig through the kinetic sand here to get part of our dinosaur. And it looks to be the head of Spinosaurus. Dig it out of the sand. It's really sticking in his mouth. All right, so I cleaned off most of the kinetic sand from the Spinosaurus's head. Pretty movie accurate looking colors for the most part. Kinetic sand kind of squishy. This feels a little bit harder than some of the other kinetic sand I've used before. All right, which next? So just like the paleontologist, we had to dig in the sand. And now, like a Jurassic Park scientist, we have to extract the dinosaur piece from this amber gel. Bloop. So this definitely has a slimy kind of feel to it, but it's not as slimy like the other stuff. But we need to extract the piece. It's like something from the movie Alien. So here we have the tail of the Spinosaurus. I have to make sure that's cleaned before I snap him together. The amber gel is really funky. It has this slimy feeling to it. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. I might throw it away because once you kind of break it apart, it doesn't like go back together and it's just mush. And the last bit for the body of the Spinosaurus. This is going to be... <laughs> oh. oh, how do we even go about getting the Spino out of here? Oh, that's nasty. You know, like, he's actually not that wet. Oh, this actually comes out pretty easy. I mean, are you a real 90s kid if you don't like slime? Like, every 90s kid watched Nickelodeon Slime Time Live. I don't think I can reuse this to put the slime in and seal it, so I might have to get a baggie or... See if I can fit this slime in one of the other smaller eggs, but I think this gives you a little bit more slime than the smaller eggs, so kind of neat. All right, so we've looked through the three compounds. We've dug out and extracted the Spinosaurus. All right, so here we go. Let's piece the Spinosaurus together. Tail in first. Not that hard, pretty easy. The head snaps in here. Done. Very nice looking Spinosaurus. 
pretty accurate colors to Jurassic Park 3. I enjoy them. 30th anniversary silver emblem right there on his chest. Pretty cool looking um, super sized dino. Let's do a size comparison with the regular size dinosaurs from the smaller eggs. So here's a size comparison difference with what you'll get in the smaller eggs versus the super sized dino. Definitely larger and I kind of like with the figure being a bit larger it makes out some more of the detail on the figure. And that's what I've pulled in my supersized egg. I am not disappointed in the slightest. This was a pretty fun video to make, just like the last. I'm probably going to cut here in a moment and break my other two eggs open and just show what I get quick. I'm not going to go over all the slime and dirt again. I'll probably cut that out and just show the trading card and the figure built here next to the Spinosaurus. All right, we're back, and the contents in the three eggs I had, I had a Spinosaurus and two Triceratops. I left one of the other Triceratops in the egg because I just didn't want to have to dig them out of the slime and everything. But here's the supersized Triceratops. Really great. Exactly like the mini here. Just bigger. Really like it. This is a nice figure. It's got some solid weight to it. Just like the mini, there's the silver 30th anniversary emblem. Here's his trading card holographic. The holographic on this card isn't as shiny shiny as the Spinosaurus in the background that you can see, but if you look up there in the tree area there, you can kind of see the shimmery sparkle sparkle. Very happy. A little bit unfortunate I didn't get a Rex. I really enjoyed filming this review and doing these unboxings. Uh, it was a little bit messy at my workstation here with the gel, the slime, and the sand. I imagine most people might throw the gel away because after you break the, the piece out of here, the stuff kind of just mushes apart and fumbles apart. The slime you can at least kind of keep somewhere and it's not like going to fall apart on you and you can it's still just going to be squishy squishy. The kinetic sand is also, it's not like other kinetic sands. Kinetic sand feels a little bit harder to mold than some of the other sand I've used so I was I thought about mixing them but I'm not sure if I'm going to mix this kinetic sand with any of my other sand. Uh, I always enjoy using kinetic sand for just dioramas and such like I've done here on my channel a few times. I hope you guys all enjoyed this review. Give the video a thumbs up and post a comment down below. Are you collecting the supersized version of the eggs or are you going after the minis? Or both. The only thing I feel like is missing on some of these products on these figures is that classic Jurassic Park mark. Here's my Lost World the Glow Bones Tyrannosaurus from 1997. Some of these little minis had that JP mark. It would just be just so much more. Mm. But that's just a, get a little nitpick, I guess. It's not really a big, big deal. I had a feeling this video was going to be upwards of 15 minutes again, just like the last one. So that's why I split this into two parts, but I hope you all really enjoyed this unboxing and overview of this product. I very much recommend it. If you, even if you don't go hardcore and try to collect all of the entire set, as these bigger eggs are 10 bucks each, I still would recommend maybe grabbing a big egg and then maybe a few small eggs and see what you get. I would recommend grabbing at least one of the big eggs for the sole fact that you can use this to transport all your mini dinos if you really wanted to for on a trip or going to a friend's house or whatever it's a really nice little gimmick to be able to transport your dinos I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with all this slime yet <laughs> but I'm JP toys 97 until next time everyone take care and have a great weekend